law is responsible for public safety at all events during the carnival period. Promoters should engage the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service Fire Prevention Department for the fire prevention requirement documents as well as the risk assessments. Exits shall be clearly identified by signage with green lettering on a white background. All exits must remain unobstructed and shall be readily open for proper evacuation of patrons in the event of an emergency. Ensure safe to use certificates are required for all temporary structures erected at your event. Each food vendor cooking or operating open flames at your event shall be outfitted with one six liter wet chemical fire extinguisher and or a 10 pound dry chemical powder fire extinguisher. Vendors, performers, and service providers using open flames shall adhere to all fire service rules and regulations on the use of open flames. Prior permission must be requested in writing to conduct fireworks, pyrotechnics, hot work, special effects within your event. Safety checks must be conducted on all music trucks for your event. Example, guardrails shall cover all trailer tires. Ensure the validity of driver's permits, inspection, certificates, and insurance. No promotional items, giveaways, or service providers shall be cited near exits, emergency routes, or emergency exits. A site visit should be conducted with the fire service to identify hazards, verify the venue layout, as well as the occupant capacity. And what we just saw there, of course, was a video from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service just telling us exactly how promoters in particular can be safe this carnival. And so we are joined by Fire Prevention Officer Mr. Jude Raj Rogers, who is also going to tell us not just how promoters can be safe, but how patrons can be safe and how we can ensure general safety at the events, especially as we are in Carnival Week. Mr. Rogers, good morning. Good morning to your listeners. Good morning to the general public at large. Yes. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. All it's a pleasure to have you. I know yes. you normally have your, your right hand. She's not yes. here with you, but we're yes. still sending good morning greetings going out to Lana, yes. and we hope that she is doing well. Yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so Mr. Rogers, we're talking safety. Mm -hmm. Let's get into patron safety first. Yes. Now, I know off air we were talking about things like having someone accompany you to the washroom yes. and that sort of thing. Just get into that a little bit. Well, the thing about it is we have foreigners who are here. We have persons from all different walks of life. We have children. We have um, young adults. And the thing about it is you don't want to be alone. You want, always want somebody to be a company somebody I call it a buddy buddy system right don't pump alone pump <laughs> with your friends you know and so we are looking out for one another one might be drinking alcohol the other one might be sober yes just as how you designate a driver so look out for one another always have a form of ID you will not believe how many IDs are found at events how many phones and all of these things these are important let us know who's your contact you can write it on the back of your ID or put it keep it in one of your pouches or something like that and it helps yeah. in the event of a situation especially if you're allergic to something yeah. that should be written down. When is it a good time to approach a fire officer in effect? So for example, we have the police here, they're doing their job. Yes. Some events also have that private security as well. Yes. We have the ambulance. How does the fire service come in to ensure safety of everybody at the event? Well, before any event takes place, the fire service does what we would call a site visit and where we will do a conduct a risk assessment. We'll be looking at the fire and the life safety protection of all the patrons involved. We're going to be looking at your exits, we're looking at your critical points, your stage, your elevated structures, anywhere that you're going to be doing anything that might be considered high risk, and we're going to put measures in place to mitigate against those risks becoming a reality. So we strategically locate officers near exits, right. close to the washrooms, along the stage, and any passageway to allow patients the guidance that is necessary. Our ambulances, once you are, once they are in the event, will be located near your exits and at what we will call probably a service provider gate or your emergency exit. Right. So it gives you a readily accessible to an officer. And by all means, please approach our officers. Right. They are knowledgeable on the layout of the event. We have site maps that are given to us prior to your event. So it's very important to have fire officers at your event. Yeah. They serve a very vital purpose. And for example, if someone faints or they have an allergic reaction, the yes. fire service will step in here as Definitely. well. Definitely. So the fire services will be alerted. Our officers are in readiness. And I want to say something about my ambulance personnel. Our ambulance personnel are one of the most experienced ambulance personnel that we have in the country. No um, shade against any other ambulance services. Right. But I'm proud of the Trinidad and Tobago Ambulance Service and the work that they do. So I want to tip my hats to them. They, they save lives 
and you don't even know about it. You continue partying while we're dealing with the emergencies. <laughs> yes, So officer. thank you to the ambulance officers of the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Yeah. Now, we spoke about patrons. Let's talk about promoters, because promoters yes. also have their role to play as well. Yes. Um, I know that you have a document here with a checklist that yeah. you give promoters so that they can I, go through that list and show that they are event ready. Right. So the fire service has standardized our method of operation. Quite some time now, we met with, stake, with all of our stakeholders. We had meetings, we had consultation with them. And in so doing, we implemented what's called the re events requirement checklist. Right. Our events requirement document was issued, which goes from where you site your stage, whether you have a pool, water trucks, all the way down to the use of drones. Mm. I'm sure you didn't remember that. No. Drones can be used. There's a policy for the use of drones in your event. And you must consult with the police and the fire service mm -hmm. to ensure that you can use a drone to capture your footage. The risk assessment document identifies all of your stakeholders, such as your electrician. Right. Because we have a lot of problems with the electrician leaving cords open to water. Some events have water. You have to use the type of electricity or type of electrical outlet that will not interact with the water. So when you are setting up the venue, is it that a fire officer comes to ensure that whatever is on your checklist is done? Because they mm. can take off and say, I've Correct. done it. But then when you go to the event, you realize wires exposed. You have a fire breather who may not have an extinguisher yes. around him. So do you have somebody go and check? Right. So there's called a pre-event check. And this is one of the main reasons why the chief fire officer is sending messages out to you in the media. We want you to come and engage the fire service. So not only do you come because you have a court date and a hearing, but you come to us in advance and discuss what you you want to have. Now the fact is Trinidad and Tobago has a unique product in the form of carnival. Mm -hmm. The fire service, the police service and all the stakeholders are here to make sure that that product is the best in the world. So to do that we must work together. Yeah. And so therefore we're asking promoters to engage us early enough so that you won't hear the no, 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 you can't do this, but you'll hear this is how we can do it safely. Now, how early is early? So, for example, if I'm having, a, let's say, a backyard lime, I yeah. have a few people, should I come to you months in advance? If it is I'm having a big fat like, let's say something like army, how much in advance should I come to alert the fire officers this is what's taking place? So that's an excellent question, and that really determines by the level of risk that you have involved. So you can imagine an army fet would have way more risk mm -hmm. than a backyard jam. Yeah. So the backyard jam may come two weeks before, and they indicate... By the court, they submit their documentation. Right. We do our side visits and we're able to generate a proper report and make our recommendations of the adequate amount of officers that should be at your event, which would be less than if you have an army. Yeah. Because you're dealing with 20,000 X amount of persons. Yeah. So you're going to have commensurate, not so much because of the amount of persons, but because of the amount of risk involved. Mm -hmm. So I want to remove the misnomer that there is a specific amount of persons to each officer. It really depends on the risk assessment and what you intend to do at your event. For instance, if you decide you want to have fireworks, that is an additional complement of officers separate and apart from the officers who would be there yeah. to deal with the patrons. They only focus on your fireworks. Yeah. And in terms of like when we have those, okay, so let's talk about risk then. Yes. For example, we have the fire breathers in yes. the event. Uh, is it that we need to have a, a, a fire officer stationed by that fire breather at every point in time to ensure that he's not a danger to himself? Definitely. So what we have, we call them a fire watch. That person is assigned to wherever there's fire breathing taking place. Right. They will also ensure that that person does not become involved with the crowd. The crowd is not to become involved in that activity. So we're going to have a little space between the fire breather and your patient who are enjoying this cultural activity that's taking place. So definitely, if anything goes wrong, that officer gets into action and utilizes mm -hmm. the extinguisher to save the life of the fire breeder who can have a mishap, yes. and we've seen it happen before. And are we also talking about the same level of mm -hmm. protection for the persons using pyrotechnics on stage? Oh, definitely. So where pyrotechnics are, are concerned, it, it can only be done by a service provider that is assigned, that, has a, that is certified. Yeah. So we have a couple of um, certified um, technicians or companies that are licensed to issue or to sell fireworks. And so we have worked with those persons during the years, and it has been to good effect. It's been a great effect. Yeah. Right. Now, before you go, um, officer, let's talk about the vendors as well. So we did patrons, we did promoters. Talk about vendor safety. And so I just want to remind the persons who are having live fires and who are cooking. Yes, you have this wonderful food taking place. But I want you to be mindful that any catastrophic event involving a fire is going to have an effect on your business yeah. and on the patrons and the promoter that you're working for. Yeah. Please check your fire extinguishers. Have them serviced long before the season starts. 
have multiple extinguishers. Keep one or two. Yeah. So in the event that one is not working, you have an alternative. And what about the clothing that they're wearing while they thank are Thank you, thank you cooking. very much. So we, we don't want loose clothing. We're asking if you wear your apron, make sure your clothing is attached to your body properly so that you're not hooking up on the stove, you're not getting involved with the fire that, or the flames that you may be utilizing. Mm -hmm. So we dress appropriately for the type of activity that we're involved in. And Officer Rogers, before you go, tell us how we can contact the fire service. Anybody who wants to have an event, how can you contact the fire service to have a fire officer? Just come and do those checks. All right, so I'm going to advise you to, to, to send an email to us because everything is gone virtual. Right. So fpadmin at gov.tt. Send your request there. We will filter it to the required divisions or you call your local fire station. The numbers are in the, 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 the online right. and get onto them directly and ask to speak to a fire prevention officer. You can seek advice over the phone. You can send in your email. Again, fpadmin, fp admin at gov.tt. Yeah. Now, we know there's a cost to have them in the event. Yes. Is there a cost also to have them check to see that everything is in order? No. Free of That's charge. That's a free of charge public Good. service that we offer. confirm that. Well, Officer Rogers, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, all the best for Carnival Week, whatever it is you're doing. If you're participating, if you're protecting us, if you're staying away from the festivities. All of but the have above. A good one and be all safe. of the above. <laughs> have a good one and be thank safe. Thank you very much. <laughs> and that was Fire Prevention Officer Jude Rogers just telling us how we can all be safe during the carnival season. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. During the carnival period, here are some road safety tips. Conduct safe to use preventative maintenance inspections to ensure your vehicle is safe to use. Wear your seatbelt at all times. It is proven to save lives. Do not overload your vehicle. Leave for your destination in a timely manner. By no means must you drink and drive. Under no circumstances while driving must you use medication which can impair your judgment. Plan your trip in advance. Hire a driver, a shuttle, or provide an alternative measure so that you can safely arrive at your carnival destination. Do not exit your vehicle on busy roadways. Know the traffic laws and adhere to them. They are for your safety. Refrain from driving when tired. Remember, road safety begins with you.